the, 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 the proper translation, it's not befitting of the masjid, but you fool, leave the old reading and stop changing it. So we know that these things happened. And this is why we have what we have today, so many variant documents and views of the New Testament. is because of the way it was transmitted to us. And Bart Ehrman goes to a great extent to prove these things. Not only that they were changed, because a lot of scholars will tell you that they are changed, but Bart Ehrman goes to a lot of depth into explaining why they were changed. He gets into the psychology of the matter of why they were changed. And now sometimes these disagreements, sometimes they, these disagreements are, are not really that serious. They might just be about when a date happened, or they might just be about how many people were at a certain event, or how many horses so-and-so had, or how much was in this army or that army. You know, those, those really don't, don't hold a lot of weight. But then there are a lot of differences as well that are fundamental. They get to the very fundamentals of, of the belief system of Christianity, the differences that are in the New Testament. And I have been trying to write a paper on the contradictions of the New Testament, and I started out with about 60. And I thought I had done some good research. I am now at 211. I'm now at a 211, so the paper is getting out of hand. Um, and some of them are so serious that they, they shake the very cores of, of the foundational beliefs in Christianity. Beginning, and the funny thing is that the contradictions begin with how Jesus was born, who Jesus was when he was born, where he was born, who his lineage was, and they go all the way up to the time that he departs from the earth. And I, I wish, and maybe I'll try to print this out and have it at my next uh, um, lecture because I put a lot of them, and for the time I won't be able to go through them with them. But I'll just, just to, I'll skip through and just show you some of them. Uh, number one, in Matthew, it says that David's uh, Jesus lineage was traced through Solomon. The, in Matthew, it traces Jesus' lineage to David and to Solomon. In Luke. Jesus' lineage is traced through David's son, Nathan. So which son was it? Was he, was he traced his lineage back to Solomon? Or does he trace his lineage back to Nathan? Depends on which book you read. Depends on which book you read. But some say that might not be a big issue. Well, it definitely shows that there's a contradiction. Definitely shows that the problem. You cannot be, you, you cannot have two grandfathers. You cannot to have two uh, maternal grandfathers and two paternal grandfathers. You have one and one. And even in um, the book of Luke, that Luke traces G Jesus' lineage through Joseph. Joseph was not Jesus' father. You're telling me he doesn't have a father, and your own Bible is telling me that his lineage goes through Joseph. Also, let me get to some of the, the, the serious ones. Um, now, also where Jesus is born. In Matthew, Jesus is born in the famous Bethlehem. In Luke, Jesus is born in Nazareth. And the reason why they say Jesus was born in, in Bethlehem was they say that King Herod called for a census. And this is the way they tried to arrange it. That King Herod called for a census and all of the people had to go back to, that were from Bethlehem, had to go back to Bethlehem. And that is known as one of the first censuses in history. Logically, this is rubbish. This is foolishness. Imagine if, uh, um, let's just take one country. Imagine if Wales was to make a worldwide announcement that every person who traced their lineage back to Wales need to come back to Wales for a census. There would be worldwide pandemonium. This would be an impossible task. So it seems like this, this could not happen. According to Mark, Jesus was tempted during 40 days in the wilderness. According to Mark, Jesus was tempted during his 40 days that he spent in the wilderness. According to Matthew, he was tempted after his 40 days in the wilderness, when he was coming away from his 40 days in the wilderness. This is when Jesus was tempted. Also, I'm trying to... Some of them don't really have any bearing. Um... Man, there's too much now that I'm reading it myself, man. 
goodness gracious. Subhanallah. Okay. 30, um, this is the 32nd one I have. It says in first, and, and these I'm going, and I even got into not just the four Gospels, I'm getting into Paul uh, because um, I like to dig into Paul as much as I can, man, because he did so much uh, uh, damage to Jesus' reputation that I'm, I'm, I'm trying to wipe him out if I can, man. Um, Paul says in 1 Timothy and in 1 John that Jesus is the mediator of the Father. Because you have to understand, number one, Paul, when he wrote these letters, which only, which there's um, 17 of them, 14 of them, or 13 of them, we know for, uh, pretty much for sure Paul wrote them, because there's other evidence of that. The other four, we don't know. The other four are suspect. Um, but you have to understand that Paul wrote these letters as letters to people and to churches. He never wrote these as, as books that he thought were, or letters that he thought would become part of canon doctrine that people would believe in throughout humanity. So... Paul was not trying to check each one of his letters to make sure that he wasn't saying something in one letter that he would then uh, um, contradict himself in another letter. You understand what I'm trying to get at? Because as the, these letters progress, you have to understand Paul was a new uh, convert to his new form of Christianity. So he was developing his ideology as he goes along and a lot of times he stumbles over his own feet in, in, in doing so. In, in in 1 Timothy and 1 John, Jesus said that Je or Paul says that Jesus is the mediator of the Father. Now, in uh, um, that's Paul's teachings. Now, whoever wrote Mark says that Jesus sits on his right hand, and whoever wrote John said that Jesus and Father are the same. Uh, Jesus and the Father are the same person. So you have three different variant views in the same New Testament. He's either mediator which means he's just the go-between. That does not give you divinity. He's just the mediator. Or he sits at the right hand of the Father. That means he's not God. God does not sit beside himself. Or he is God. Depends on which book you read. They have three variant views here. And then I'm going to try to finish up in the last few minutes to give you some of the evidence of what Jesus really said and did. Also, in 1 Timothy and in James... G, uh, 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 um, Paul says there is one God. This is some of the beginning writings that he wrote. And then later on he writes in 1 John the, that these are three. Though actually, I took that one out. That was the early one I wrote. 1 John 5 and 7. You know the, the one that the, the, only, the only verse that exists in the Bible that describes the Trinity um, is 1 John 5 and 7. Which it says that there are three that bear record in heaven. Uh, they are the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and they are three that bear record in earth, and they are the water, the blood, and the Spirit. And these three are one, and these three agree as one. Um, almost all church scholars have come to the conclusion that this was never a part of the original Bible, that this was later added in the Latin manuscripts. This was later added in the, in the, in the, in the Latin manuscripts, that this does not exist in any of the earliest documents, none of them. None of them exist in there. So this is why when they wrote what is called the Revised Standard Version in the 50s, they removed a lot of these verses. They removed this verse because it does not exist in the original manuscripts. And actually a lot of the things that they will give you to hold weight to, which I'm going to give you in just a moment, the arguments they give you, garbage. So I don't want to keep going and going and going. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to print these out for those of you who come. I'm going to try to print out all 200 and something of these because, man, this, I'm scrolling forever and I will be reading forever. Yes. Even ones that, that existed, some of them we have a little bit before that, but all of the oldest manuscripts, what it means by the uh, uh, oldest manuscripts of what we have, old, the oldest things that do exist. Not, not after 325 AD, because there are some manuscripts that do even exist before 325 AD, um, but the ones that we do have, the oldest existing ones, meaning the, the last ones that we can trace it as far as we can trace it back to, none of them are ever have this verse first of uh, 1 John 5 and 7. And it actually only starts to appear in later manuscripts. And especially in the Latin manuscripts is when you start to see this uh, uh, testament of the Trinity coming in. Uh, other than that, it does, it does not exist. And most scholars are of that opinion uh, that, it, that it does not belong in the Bible. Um... Some other things that will come at you because we're definitely running out of time. Some other things. 
And I and this is what I say when I try to get to the psychology.